is Common Core State Standard Support video in mathematics. The standard is 5NBTB7. This standard states, add, subtract, multiply, and divide decimals to hundreds using concrete models or drawings and strategies based on place value, properties of operations, and or the relationship between addition and subtraction. Relate the strategy to a written method and explain the reasoning used. It's important to see what other standards this connects to but not so much the connections, we really need to understand uh, what types of numbers, what are our limitations as far as the numbers that we can use here. Standard 5 NBTB5 uh, deals with multiplying multi-digit whole numbers using the standard algorithm. So we know that uh, whole numbers are pretty much fair game. Standard 5 NBTB6 uh, talks about whole number quotients of whole numbers with up to four digit dividends and two digit divisors. So two digit divisors would be uh, uh, our maximum. As far as multiplication, uh, standard 5NFB4 deals with that, but more importantly, it deals with fractions. Uh, looks like we're limited to multiplying a fraction by a whole number or a fraction by another fraction. And specifically, uh, standard 4A under that uh, again, just uh, reemphasizes one more time that we're dealing with multiplying a fraction times a whole number or multiplying a fraction times another fraction. Standard 5 in FB7 uh, deals with uh, previous understandings of division to divide unit fractions by whole numbers and whole numbers by unit fractions. So here, uh, under that, 7A deals with division of a unit fraction by a non-zero whole number whereas 7b deals with division of whole numbers by a unit fraction. Now that we have a better idea as to what numbers are allowed, uh, let's go ahead and get into this standard. Uh, let's first focus on adding decimals to hundreds. Well, let's relate this back to whole numbers. Uh, let's say we have this example. To solve this, though, we uh, have to uh, put these numbers vertically, but we can't just put them any way that we want. Uh, this would be incorrect. You know, we teach our students that we have to align them. Uh, the critical idea here is that only like items can be combined. So it's important that we align these vertically to where we make sure that we're adding ones with ones, tens with tens, and hundreds with hundreds. Now let's use those same uh, numerals, but let's throw in uh, decimals. So let's say we have 2 plus 34 and 8 tenths plus 75 hundredths. When we put these vertically, again, just like with whole numbers, you can't just uh, you know, put them anywhere that you want. So we were taught that, okay, you line up the decimal points. And we also need to fill in our zeros for our different place values. And when we compute this, this is a solution that we get. Now notice again the idea of lining up the decimal points. But there's something interesting here. Wasn't it the same case with whole numbers? But we didn't approach it in terms of decimal points. You know, we just lined up ones with ones and so forth. But it's the same idea. So it's not like uh, this is something that's brand new that applies to decimals. But the key idea here isn't the fact that the decimal points are aligned vertically but really it's the reason why they're aligned. Well, the decimal points are aligned vertically to make sure that we're adding like items. Uh, over here, again, ones with ones, tens with tens, hundreds with hundreds. And in the case of decimals, it's the same exact idea. Make sure they're adding hundreds with hundreds, tenths with tenths, uh, ones with ones, and tens with tens. But again, it's why we're doing it. Again, it's to make sure that we're adding like items. Of course, the same idea applies to subtraction. So we have to align the decimal points when subtracting to, again, make sure that we're subtracting like items. So like in this example here, <laughs> this isn't going to cut it. Because, for example, uh, if I'm going to subtract 8 from 3, wait a minute, that's not right, because this is hundredths and the 3 is tenths. So what we have to do is, just like with addition, Make sure that we align them correctly so that we're adding, well, in this case, subtracting like items. Fill in our zero. We can't take eight hundredths from no hundredths, so we have to decompose 
uh, one of our uh, tenths in the ten hundredths. So now we can subtract. We take eight hundredths from ten hundredths, so we get two. Uh, then we have to subtract six tenths from two tenths. Oops, can't do it. So we're going to have to decompose uh, our one, one of our ones uh, into ten tenths. So now we have 12 tenths, subtract 6 tenths, and we get 6. Then we can subtract 2 ones from 6 ones. And then we can subtract 4 tens from 5 tens. Same idea with our decimal points for addition. Uh, and it makes sense that uh, our solution has to be 14 and 62 hundredths. Let's look at this idea of using concrete models or drawings uh, with place value. Uh, most of y'all have uh, these types of manipulatives you know, use, uh, where you have hundreds and tens and ones. We might be able to adjust a little bit and think of the equivalent idea here of one one being ten tenths, which in turn is one hundred hundredths. But physically, there might be a little bit of a problem because when you start getting down to tenths and hundredths, those are very, very small, and most of you may not have those types of class sets of manipulatives. More than likely, what we'll have to do uh, in some of your classrooms is use drawings or representations rather than physical models. Let's use this idea of concrete models or drawings uh, in connection with place value. Let's take that same uh, problem that we had a while ago, and here's our physical representation or our drawing. We have five tens seven ones, and three tenths. Before we go on, and I have to be careful about this too, uh, the pronunciation. We have a tendency to say things like 57.3 or 42.68. And it may not be mathematically incorrect, but it really does take students' minds away from the idea of place value. So it's best to just name these for what they are. 57.3, uh, that's not 57.3, it's 57 and 3 tenths. Same thing with uh, 42.68, no, that's 42 and 68 hundredths. Again, it, students can connect a lot better to place value and, and understand what a number really is, and pronounce them like, again, what they are, 57 and 3 tenths in this case. Now, what we want to do also is uh, connect the physical model to place value. So again, make sure you do something like this, and of course here's our uh, decimal point, so that again, students understand exactly what each of these uh, model. So here's our situation. We couldn't take eight hundredths uh, from no hundredths, so we have to decompose one of our tenths into ten one hundredths, and now we can take away eight of those. And here's what we have. And then we have to subtract six tenths from two tenths, but we can't take six from this. So just like uh, we had done previously, we decompose uh, one of our ones here into ten tenths. And now we can take away six of those. And so this is what we're left with. And now we can take uh, two ones from six ones, and here's what we're left with. And then we have to take four tens away from five tens. And here's the result as far as our model. And it should be our decimal between the four and the six to make 14 and 62 hundredths. And also, you can use your physical model or your drawing to connect back and make sure. Uh, again, here's one ten, here's four ones, here's our six tenths, and here's our two one hundredths. Now let's switch over to multiplication division. Now it says it two hundredths, but there's a little bit of confusion here. By hundredths, are we talking about uh, the products, are we talking about the factors, are we talking, uh, does this apply to the quotient or also to maybe the divisor or the dividend? 
an investigation of the standards reveals uh, this statement in the introduction uh, for fifth grade. It states they compute products and quotients of decimals to hundredths efficiently and accurately. So here's the answer right here. Uh, we can go to hundredths in terms of the result, uh, products for multiplication, quotients for division. So that adds some clarity and now we know what our limitations are. It's not until sixth grade, when you look ahead at uh, those standards, where standard 6 NSB 3 states that students are supposed to fluently add, subtract, multiply, and divide multi-digit decimals using the standard algorithm for each operation. So it's not until the next grade level that they're expected to go beyond uh, products or quotients uh, to the hundredths place. Now, at the fifth grade level, it's really important to focus on ensuring that students understand the placement of the decimal point beyond the memorization of rules. They need to understand the why. You know, why did this happen with the decimal point? Why are we putting it here instead of there? So that needs to be the focus. Let's look at multiplication. Let's take this example, 37 and 23 hundredths times 5. If we do it this way, so we can use our distributor property, uh, we can break it up to its actual value of 30 plus 7 plus 2 tenths plus 3 hundredths, and all of that times 5. Multiply it out and get our partial products. Then we figure out what each of those partial products are. And we combine them all to get our final solution of 186 and 15 hundredths. But this was a little bit fast. Students are probably going to be a little bit confused, especially as far as the decimal placement. One of the things that students need to do is to establish the reasonableness of a solution. So in a situation like this, 37 and 23 hundredths, well, that falls between 37 and 38. So when we multiply these out, uh, just using reasonableness, we know that our answer is going to have to be somewhere between 185 and 190. So our answer of 186 and 15 hundredths makes sense. Now, students pretty much can handle the whole number part. So let's concentrate on the decimal section of this. Now let's just look at 23 hundredths times 5. Let's use our standard algorithm and just multiply this out. Okay. So now the question is, where is the decimal point going to go? Well, if we look at this in terms of money, this would be like 23 cents, which is pretty close to a quarter. And if we estimate, well, five quarters would be $1.25. So this being uh, 1 and 15 hundredths makes sense. So the decimal placement here would be reasonable. That would be the expectation. We can also look at this and convert this to addition. We could just uh, have uh, 23 hundredths five times. And so we combine them all. And we know it's 1 and 15 hundredths. So we know exactly where to put the decimal point. Let's take a different approach. Let's use our distributive property and change this to 2 tenths plus 3 hundredths times 5. And then we just follow the uh, rules for the distributive property, multiply them out, get our partial products to get our final solution of 1 and 15 hundredths. Now let's tie this back to the idea of fractions. If we take uh, 2 tenths times 5, well, that's just five sets of two tenths, okay? So we combine all of those, 10 over 10, which is 1. And using that same line of thinking, we have three hundredths times 5, so we have five three hundredths expressed in fraction form. When we combine all those together, that would be 15 hundredths. So 15 hundredths as a decimal would be 0.15. And now when we look at this uh, all together, take our fractions. We have 1 plus 15 hundredths, which connects back to our partial product and then our final answer.
There's another standard that this connects to, standard 5NFB 5B. In particular, this statement that deals with explaining why multiplying a given number by a fraction less than one results in a product smaller than the given number. And that's what we're going to have in a lot of these situations. For example, the one that we just did. We have five times 23 hundredths. And so uh, we get our solution of one and 15 hundredths, which is smaller than five. And so that makes sense, that if I uh, multiply a number by a fraction less than one, which what we have here, you're going to get a product that's was smaller than the original number. Okay, let's take another example, 4 tenths times 2 tenths. But now let's try to use some type of concrete uh, representation and focus on place value. One way to look at this is 4 tenths of 2 tenths. Okay, so we're going to take a unit square and split it up into 10 equal parts. And we're starting off with 2 tenths. Okay, so we have 2 tenths. And we want 4 tenths of that. So we, now we need to subdivide this into 10 equal parts in the other direction, horizontally. And so there's 4 tenths. But we're not done by any means because this is 4 tenths of our whole 1, not of the 2 tenths. So that's not what we need. Okay, so uh, we need to do a little bit of manipulation. Uh, let's get rid of all of that. Uh, now we need to, again, convert this to where we are dealing with four tenths of just the two tenths, not of the whole one. So we need to get rid of that. And now we also need to eliminate this because this is what we want. This is the four tenths of the two tenths. And there we have it. So this is the result. So we have these little uh, units here, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Okay. But exactly what are these, uh, which ties back to this idea of where's the decimal point going to go? Well, remember that we had split it up this way. It's 10 by 10, so there was 100 of these. So we have 8 hundredths. So just by using the representation, we are able to figure out where the decimal point goes. But we can't always use the physical model to figure that out, so we need to also look at this from other perspectives. It's always a good idea to connect your decimals back to fractions. So here we convert this and represent it as fractions, uh, as 4 tenths times 2 tenths. If we do our multiplication, uh, bingo, there it is. It's 8 over 100. So now this verifies that our decimal placement is correct. It is 8 one hundredths. And again, this connects back to the fractions and the decimals. It connects them. We have four tenths here. We have our two tenths, and we have our eight one hundredths.